Today we're going to look at a pair of Ultra Compacts, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo 2 and the Boogaboo Butterfly, as the first of what will likely be a series of videos exploring how the Butterfly, a model that we believe will wind up being quite popular moving forwards, matches up against competing models at the upper end of the market. So let's have a look then, taking each in turn and examining their differences in terms of child comfort, ease of use, longevity and driving characteristics, before ending with a discussion of price, what's included with purchase, and which lifestyle and environmental particulars each will best suit. And starting off with the yo-yo then, the model clocks in at 6.2 kilos and folds down to 52 by 44 by 18 centimeters. It can take 22 kilos in the seat and 5 kilos in its underslung shopping basket. In terms of child comfort, the yo-yo has a decently sized seat overall, with a baseboard depth of 30 centimeters, a width of 31 centimeters, good leg space, and a lot of room beneath the canopy. At the same time though, it's worth noting that the actual backboard, at 43 centimeters high, is a bit short in comparison to a lot of newer ultra compacts, which can mean a premature loss of head support if your child is on the upper end of the growth curve. Beyond this though, despite being a bit bare bones and its lack of a zipper extension in the canopy or an inbuilt adjustable leg rest, there being only a leg rest sold as an extra accessory, the yo-yo seat is still quite nice in my opinion, with well padded and durable fabrics, an easy to use harness, a deep recline, and a canopy that provides adequate sun coverage. When it comes to parent comfort, the yo-yo has one of the highest handles among ultra compacts on the market, at 106 centimeters, a decently sized shopping basket, and a very easy to accomplish two-stage fold, resulting in a package that's light, compact, and pretty flat, the last characteristic being particularly valuable when slinging the model over your shoulder with the yo-yo's inbuilt shoulder strap, which is, in my opinion, one of the model's chief advantages, providing the ability to make your stroller disappear so to speak, which can be highly useful for situations like travel or negotiating negotiating crowded spaces in public transport. The yo-yo feels sturdy and stable to drive around, despite its light weight, due to an efficient use of reinforcement in its overall design, and is also quite simple mechanically, and overall, barring excessive misuse, the yo-yo has proven itself to be one of those strollers that holds up incredibly well over the long run, capable of lasting for many children, and being then coincidentally also one of the better models to pick up on the used market if you're looking to save a few bucks. Terrain-wise, the yo-yo is unsuitable for off-road use, but its slightly above average wheel size for models of this sort does at least allow for limited use over stuff like gravel, lawns, and broken sidewalks, though note that, over time, overdoing it with rougher environments like this will increase the loosening of the chassis. Alright, moving on, the butterfly weighs in at a heavier 7.3 kilos and folds down to 45 by 23 by 54 centimeters, which is a bit larger, but still within the IATA's guidelines. Like the yo-yo, it can take 22 kilos in the seat, but a heftier 8 kilos in its underslung shopping basket. The butterfly seat is similar in terms of legroom and baseboard depth, but is both a little wider at 34 centimeters and has a significantly longer backboard, making it then more suitable for providing head support to taller toddlers. It has a similarly deep recline, somewhat more luxurious feeling textiles in my opinion, and a 19 centimeter long and very sturdy inbuilt adjustable leg rest. Unlike the yo-yo, the butterfly's canopy does have an extra extendable portion, though since it's made of mesh, doesn't necessarily provide better sun coverage. When it comes to parent comfort, the butterfly's handle is a little shorter, at 102.4 centimeters, but its basket is larger, more accessible in the way it protrudes off the back end with a hinged lip, and is also sturdier, capable of carrying that heavier load of 8 kilos versus 5 on the yo-yo. Folding the model is simpler in that it involves only a single step, but feels stiffer, harder on the hands, due to the chassis' heavier and more rigid structure. When folded, the butterfly takes up more or less the same storage space as the yo-yo, but that extra kilo, a shorter shoulder strap, and most importantly, being 23 as opposed to 18 centimeters thick, makes it a lot less convenient to carry slung from the shoulder for any length of time, though it does have a second inbuilt carrying method in that its leg rest doubles as a handle, which is nice when carrying it for shorter periods. The butterfly feels more rigid to use than the yo-yo, flexing less as you drive, and is overall a bit more reinforced, which is the reason for its added weight. It's pretty simple in its mechanisms for a Boogaboo model and in comparison to other one-hand, one-step folding ultra compacts, but it's still definitely more complex than the yo-yo, both in terms of its folding system as well as in the number of hinged points across the chassis, and though I do have a strong impression that it will prove quite durable, it's still a little too soon to rule out problems emerging over time.
In addition, the front wheels sit a tad loose right out of the box and are also over half an inch smaller than the Yo-Yo's, making the model a bit more bumpy over the slightly rougher conditions that sometimes go along with urban living. The difference here is slight, of course, since neither of these can handle off-roading. But let's just say that over broken sidewalks, or if you find yourself suddenly facing a wide gravel parking lot, the Yo-Yo will be a little less jarring. At the same time, though, the better reinforcement of the butterfly conversely means that such situations will do less wear to the overall chassis, and also makes the model a preferable option for all-day, everyday use without a car, at least with regards to long-term durability. So, which of these is the better model, then? I would say that they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Price-wise, the Butterfly is definitely better, not just in terms of base cost and guarantee, but because it comes with both that adjustable leg rest and the rain cover included, which in my part of the world at least is a much more necessary inclusion than the Yo-Yo's travel bag. Beyond this, the Butterfly's main advantages are its seat size, its storage capacity, and its rigid durability for handling all day, every day trekking across the city. While the Yo-Yo has a proven track record of holding up well over time, slightly better terrain capability, is a tad lighter, and is better for travel or for lifestyles where one needs to fold and carry their stroller a lot over the course of the day due to its better shoulder strap and slimmer folded dimensions. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about either of these models, we have standalone reviews that go into a lot more detail, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.